Hello and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back here to the channel guys where today we are going to be previewing the game between Sporting and Barcelona in the Champions League and we're going to be having a look at all the stats, all the facts and all you need to know ahead of a big Champions League group stage match in Group D which is coming up tomorrow evening. As always the previews are sponsored by OneFootball and if you did miss it last time they do have a very very good Champions League competition currently ongoing. If you go on their app, if you scroll down the newsfeed, you'll see the competition whereby you can win tickets to any Champions League match, group stage match of your choice, and you can also take two friends. One football, a great little competition there, and one football app users really do believe once again that Barcelona are going to come out on the winning side when we travel to Sporting Lisbon to take them on in Portugal. 60,000 people have voted, and 89% of one football app users believe that Barcelona will be successful when they visit Estadio Jose Avalade tomorrow night. Like most Champions League ties, this match will be kicking off at 8.45 local time and it really will be a great night of Champions League football on that. They, they decided to put all of the great games all on the one night. In the other game in the group, Juventus will face Olympiacos at the Juventus Stadium and there's absolute crackers elsewhere as Atletico Madrid take on Chelsea at the Wanda Metropolitano Stadium and PSG will host Bayern Munich in a really, really good clash in their group. So there's lots of games going on tomorrow. We, of course, though, are going to be keeping an eye on Sporting CP against Barcelona. Sporting do like to be called Sporting Club de Portugal instead of Sporting Lisbon. So we're going to stick with just Sporting in this video. But it is a game where both teams come into the game joint top of Group D. We, of course, beat Juventus on the opening Champions League match day three goals to nil at the camp now. Sporting Sporting, though, went away to Olympiacos and recorded a very good win on the night, a very entertaining game it was. They won 3-2 at Olympiacos, and they have three points so far from that opening Champions League game. They do also come into the game on very, very good form domestically. They're currently unbeaten so far this season, and are only second in Liga Nos to Porto, who got maximum points. They're just two points behind them, and Sporting in their last few games since the season have started have been in really, really good form under the stewardship of of Jorge Jesus, very charismatic coach indeed. And if we're looking at Sporting's team, particularly their attacking players, they have had a number of guys this season really do firing on all cylinders, scoring the goals up front. You've got Baz Dost, of course, who last season was banging them in left, right and centre. He was right up there in the golden boot race with the Lionel Messi. He was scoring goals for fun last season. Very tall striker. I'm going to come on to it later, but I think that's the reason possibly PK will certainly be back in for this game. He will pose an aerial threat. And either side of him, he's got Jelson Martins, very, very pacey winger. He's got three goals so far in Liga Nost this season. Baz Dost himself has got four. And then just behind him, he's got Bruno Fernandes, another creative player, somebody who can score goals, somebody who can create goals. And he's one of their top goal scorers this season. He's got five goals already in the Portuguese league. So they definitely have a goal threat. They can definitely cause us problems going forward. And defensively, you know, in midfield, in defensive midfield, they've got William Carvalho, a very sought-after, young, talented defensive midfield player has played for Portugal as well. They've got a lot of players who, of course, won the Euros in 2016. Their goalkeeper, Rui Patricio, one of those. Their centre-back, of course, ex-Barca man, Jeremy Machu, who incidentally said that he would celebrate if he scored against Barcelona because he felt that he was badly treated by Bartomeu and Roberto Fernandes. So very interesting words indeed from Jeremy Machu ahead of this game. So it's going to be very interesting indeed to keep an eye on Machu's performance and see how he does play against us tomorrow night. But we, of course, are going into this game just like Sporting, beaten ourselves. The difference with us though is that we got maximum points from our opening six games in the league. Six out of six wins under Ernesto Valverde. A maximum of 18 points gained in La Liga and we are firmly at the top of the league. We're very informed, so is Sporting and it's going to be a really exciting tie. Going to an away stadium in the Champions League group stage. I think it's a very big game. I think they're not going to be an easy opponent. Sporting, they've got quality. They've certainly got attacking players who could hurt us on the day. Our last meeting with Sporting was back in 2000 2008 in the group stage of that Champions League. The 2008-2009 season, of course, we went on to win the competition under Pep Guardiola 2-0 on the night in that final against Manchester United. But on the day, in the group stage, we beat them 3-1 at the camp now with Marquez, Samuel Eto from the penalty spot and Xavi Hernandez all getting on the score sheet on that night. And away from home, we absolutely hammered them 5-2 on the night. Thierry Henry, Gerard Piquet, Messi, an own goal and Bojan all 
all the scoring for Barcelona. And I mentioned Rui Patricio earlier. He was also playing in that match and he was sent off the last time we faced them in Sporting. So that's going to be really interesting to see how he performs and he'll be hoping that he doesn't concede five goals tomorrow night. But it is going to be a big game. I think Valverde has taken a very strong squad to the day. The only players that he has not included are Thomas Vermaelen, Rafinha, Arda Turan, Paco Alcacer and Usman Dembele, of course. Dembele, Rafinha are both injured. Arda Turan has been left out simply for technical reasons. So has Thomas Vermaelen. It's a very interesting exclusion once again for Paco Alcacer because right now nobody thinks that he's injured. He's simply being left out because Valverde does not want to include him. And according to a lot of Spanish media, and particularly in the Catalan press, they believe that Valverde does not count on Alcacer and does not see him in his long-term plans. There's been a lot of whispers in the last few days since this squad came out that Alcacer could actually be leaving the club come January. So it's going to be interesting to see how that one pans out. I was quite surprised to see him once again left out of the team. Of course, Luis Suarez trying to get back to full form. But we don't really have anyone else who's a real striker figure. Of course, Lionel Messi right now is playing in that false nine role. But I'm still surprised that possibly Alcacer has not received more chances. But clearly right now, Valverde feels like he's not in his plans and he may not be and come January if that continues Alcacer has reportedly given it one more month and if things don't improve he will be looking for a new club to go to possibly in January so it's going to be really interesting to see how that one pans out but we're going to have a look now at the team that I would select in this game and the team selection for this one I think is going to be a lot lot easier to sort of predict what Valverde is going to do I don't think that he's going to make many changes at all in sporting from his sort of big 11 the one that we saw against Juventus the team that is sort of our best team Team, our Gala 11 that it's being nicknamed and I think that's what we're going to see tomorrow we're going to see a team of course without Dembele our, our big money signing of course because he's injured but we are going to see the likes of Piquet return we're going to see Semedo return I think Delafeu is going to play in that front three so I'm going to go with Ter Stegen, Jordi Alba, Samuel Umtiti, Piquet at the centre of defence instead of Mascherano, Semedo, Busquets will return to the starting lineup. Iniesta I can see starting once again, Ivan Rakitic in his preferred role in midfield at the right of the three and then Suarez, Lionel Messi and Gerard Delafeu returning to the team following his rest against Girona on the weekend. But the reason that I've gone with this team is quite simple really. I think this is a game that we really really do need to win. A lot of people are saying you know we can afford to take it easily but I think any sort of Champions League group stage match particularly at the start of the group stage needs to be taken seriously. Sporting away from home is one of those games that could definitely be tricky. We've beaten Juve at home and now we want to go away from home and sort of build on that. We don't want to mess up now. We don't want to give it back into Juve's hands. We want to keep the pressure on them. Hopefully Olympiacos can come up with something against them tomorrow night, but I can't see it personally. But I think we need to go to Sporting and certainly win the game. Take our best team, put our best team on the field, and let them do the rest. And once again, as always, if you put your best team out there, if you're winning, if you're 2-0 up or whatever, you can then go and rest some players if you want to. Because I think the likes of Denis Suarez can come on. He can make an impact. He's looked really, really impressive of late. And I just think that we can certainly afford to take things a little bit easier. Because at the weekend we've got Las Palmas at home that's a game that you certainly expect us to win at the camp now that game isn't until Sunday so we've got a bit of rest a bit of time to recover from that one and I think Semedo coming back into the team is massive I think what he gives us down that right hand side is absolutely huge I think Piquet will come back in even though Mascherano has been excellent really really excellent since Piquet has been out of the lineup and Umtiti as well rested the, the game before that but I think Piquet will come in simply because of that aerial presence that he has and going up against Baz Dost we are are going to need somebody in there who can handle him in the air and I think PK can certainly do that job as well and Busquets of course from corners he's got a bit of height in there as well but I think the midfield Busquets, Iniesta, Rakitic plays so much better when Semedo is at the right of him you know he's so much more balanced he can concentrate on his own role he doesn't have to babysit he doesn't have to worry about the right back Semedo is going to give us an awful lot down that right hand side and even early on the signs with him and Delafeu are very very good indeed I think Delafeu's work is quite underrated with a lot of fans a lot of people are frustrated with his final ball I can completely understand that but I think he does work hard for the team he works very very hard he puts his all in because I think when he joined the club there was a lot of people who thought that he might be a bit selfish wouldn't work for the team wouldn't really buy into the team's ideas but fair play to Delafay he's got his head down he's working very very hard he's tactically very good you know he keeps his width on that right hand side he's very very important for the system dragging defenders away from Lionel Messi in that central role so he is key to what we're trying to do and I can certainly see him coming in and returning to the team tomorrow and that was why he was rested against Girona. I really, really hope that Luis Suarez can follow up his goal against Girona with another one against Sporting. That would really help his confidence. That would help us as well. We 
need him in games like this. Tough away stadiums, difficult away games. You need your strikers to come up with the goals. And of course, Lionel Messi will be looking to get more goals in the Champions League. He absolutely loves this competition and we love watching him in it. So it's going to be really interesting to see how tomorrow night turns out. I think we're going to put a strong team out. We're going to take the game seriously. Sporting are given, going to give us a test. But I think we can come through that as long as we turn up to the game in the best possible mindset. We need to go into this game believing that we need to win it because I think we certainly need to to give ourselves the best possible chance of getting out of this group and most importantly finishing in that first place spot. So I'm going to go with a match prediction of 3-1. I don't think we're going to keep a clean sheet. I think Sporting you know, as an attacking unit, do have some threats, and we possibly could be susceptible to the counter-attack. At times, DOS will cause us some problems in the air, but I think we've got the firepower up front, and certainly in that midfield, if we can be structured, if we can keep the ball, if we can certainly play through the middle of the park, like we did against Juve, we can cause Sporting real problems going the other way. We can attack their centre of defence, we can cause problems down the wings as well, and like I say, I really hope that Luis Suarez can follow up from Girona and get a goal in this game too. So I'm going to go Barcelona 3, Sporting Club de Portugal 1. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys. Let me know your lineup predictions. As always, let me know your score predictions. I always like to hear your thoughts. And as always, tomorrow I'll have videos coming up for you when the lineup is out, after the game with the match review, and lots more going on as well in the channel. If you missed it yesterday, I did do a game on pairs. Not everybody enjoyed it. That's absolutely fine. If you don't want to watch it, you don't have to. But I just want to make it absolutely clear in the videos where I do do that and I play pairs and video games, they're not going to take over the channel. That's so, so important. A lot of people are getting on me for that. Honestly, the usual videos will be continuing as usual. I'll always have my match reviews. I'll always have my match previews. I'll always have the analysis videos. That's never, ever going to change. All the video game videos are doing is just adding a bit more to the channel, giving a bit more diversity, and just trying to provide something for everyone. But don't worry, nothing will be falling off the edge. I'm keeping the usual videos coming your way, guys. Don't ever worry about that. So leave your predictions down below, guys. I'll see you very, very shortly with more videos. But until then, as always, Vesca, uh, Barca. Barca, Barca.